Hello, I'm Ian James, and today I'm going to be preparing an American classic, Meatloaf. First appearing in cookbooks during the 1870s from German origins, Meatloaf increased in popularity through the mid-20th century when it really skyrocketed. Today, Meatloaf is still a homespun classic that people enjoy across the generations. For this recipe, you will need one to one and a half pounds ground beef, breadcrumbs, ketchup, cheese, an egg, a tomato, and one half onion. salt and pepper to taste. While I'm basing my meatloaf off a of family recipe, you can open up any cookbook and have a variety of recipes available to you. This is uh, my collection of good housekeeping cookbooks from 1958, and it's a number of these small little booklets you see here, ranging from main courses to side dishes, and it really is a great collection. But here we have a number of meatloaf recipes that include mushrooms. This one has peaches and I'm not that adventurous, but perhaps you could try it sometime. And going from cold to hors d'oeuvre or hot meatloafs, they can be really a versatile type of dish. The first thing I did was preheat my oven to 350 degrees. And now it's really just a simple process of combining and shaping the loaf. So we start with the one to one and a half pounds of ground beef. I'm gonna put in the egg. The ketchup. As I mentioned, this recipe is based off one that my parents taught me, and there's many variations. Uh, for instance, Worcestershire sauce is a popular addition, and it's a wet, rather wet mixture until the breadcrumbs are added. Now, I enjoy putting in cheese. Here I have a few slices of provolone, but really any type of cheese um, that is mild can work. American. Uh, for instance, or Swiss. Crumble it up so that it melts uniformly throughout the meatloaf. And then I'm going to be putting in one half chopped onion. <laughs> I'm going to put in about half of this bread crumb bowl for now and see how dry it is after I mix it. There's no set ratio for breadcrumbs. It's just to keep it dry, but if you put too much in, it can negatively affect the flavor. And these sliced tomatoes will be used for a garnish later. There's really no way around it. You just have to get in there. It's a little bit messy. Kind of like making a meatball mixture. So you mix until it's uniform throughout. It's still a little wet. I think I'll put in a few more breadcrumbs. And then it's best not to work it too much. Right, a little bit more. I recall when I was a child, my mother called this an inside out cheeseburger because the prospect of a meat loaf was rather unappetizing to myself at a young age and it really has a lot of the same ingredients as a hamburger. All right, so now we shape it into a loaf. Now, this is something that my father taught me to do. He put a welt on the top of the meatloaf. 
such as that. And then you spoon in some ketchup. There we go. This really helps to keep the meatloaf moist in the oven. And when served, you do not need to add any more ketchup. There we go. And now I put on these tomato slices. This was the top where I cut off, so this will be included towards the middle. So with the good ones overlap, and no one will be the wiser. Same with this one. Okay, very good. Now, the meatloaf is ready to go into the oven where it'll cook for about 45 to 50 minutes. It will, depending on uh, what percentage of fat to beef you have, this is 85% lean. It'll shrink in the oven and will cast off some juices, uh, which can be served on the side. After 45 minutes, the meatloaf is done. Here I'm serving it with a side of mashed potatoes and canned green beans in true mid-century fashion. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and leave a comment in the section below if you have any suggestions of historical or other types of recipes that you'd like to see me make. I hope you enjoyed it, and have a good rest of your day.